Gene Paul Getty was one time the world's richest man. He was also the 67th richest American who ever lived. He was a billionaire, heir to the famous oil tycoon George Getty. Paul Getty was also one of the most successful oil men in the United States. If anything, he was also an even more successful art collector. This led to the establishment of the popular Getty Museum in Malibu, California in 1953. He also acquired a number of energy companies before discovering and mining major oil deposits in Saudi Arabia, a feat which made him for years the richest living American. Though he was very wealthy, Getty was known for being a miser. He was also known for his extravagant lifestyle on women instead of helping family members and friends. To shock you, by age 61, Getty had compiled a list of 100 lovers he remembered affectionately and also had an affair with in one way or the other. He believed that when you are poor in lack of money, that's when you stay with one woman. He had a very promising beginning, but a dysfunctional ending. How did it begin? Paul Getty was born December 15, 1892, in Minneapolis to George F. Getty and Sarah C. McPherson Richard, and he was raised as an only child. Getty was raised as a Methodist by his parents, his father was a devout Christian scientist, and both parents were strict teetotalers as they never drink alcohol. In fact, he was of part Scottish descent. In 1903, when Paul was 10 years old, George traveled to Bartlesville, Oklahoma, and bought the mineral rights for 1,100 acres of land. The Getty family subsequently moved to Bartlesville, where Paul attended school also. Within few years, George had established wells on the land and was producing 100,000 barrels of crude oil a month. He later named the company Minnehoma Oil. As newly minted millionaires, the family moved to Los Angeles, but Paul later returned to Oklahoma at age 14, Paul attended Harvard Military School for a year, followed by Polytechnic High School, where he was given the nickname Dictionary Getty because of his love for reading. He became fluent in French, German, and Italian. Getty was also conversational in Spanish, Greek, Arabic, and Russian. A love of the classics led Getty to acquire reading proficiency in ancient Greek and Latin. He was a multilingual. One day, Paul, as he was known throughout his life, accompanied his father to the oil fields. That was at the age of 15. He asked George if he could work for his company, Minnehoma Oil. George agreed, but awarded his son no special treatment. Getty worked as a casual laborer for $3 a day, 12 hours a shift, that was around $21 per week, which was big money then. Though he found his job interesting, but he never enjoys the strict conditions and harsh treatments his dad gave him. He thought, as the only son, he supposed enjoy some special treatments. This forced him to take another action by quitting the job. He enrolled at the University of California, Berkeley, but did not complete a degree. He later traveled to Europe with his parents in 1910 and loved what he saw there. Thereafter, he enrolled at the University of Oxford on November 28, 1912. He obtained a diploma in economics and political science from Oxford in June 1913, then spent months traveling throughout Europe and Egypt before meeting his parents in Paris and returning with them to America. In June 1914, George suggested he spend a year prospecting for oil. Though Paul hoped to be a diplomat or writer, he found the diversion appealing. In the autumn of 1914, George gave his son $10,000 to invest in expanding the family's oil field holdings in Oklahoma. The first lot he bought, the Nancy Taylor No. 1 oil well site near Haskell, Oklahoma, was crucial to his early financial success. 
The well struck oil in August 1915, and by the next summer, the 40% net production royalty he accrued from it had made him a millionaire. Paul promptly decided to retire and enjoy a life just in his early 20s. But later, the case of oil fever motivated him to return to the oil business in 1919 after wasting a lot of money on irrelevant things. So, in the 1920s, he added about $3 million to his already sizable estate. He got married and later divorced short after that. His succession of marriages and divorces so distressed his father that Jean Paul Getty inherited only $500,000 of the $10 million fortune his father left at that time of his death in 1930. Paul was also left with one-third of the stock from George Getty, Inc., while his mother received the remaining two-thirds, giving her a controlling interest. In 1936, Getty's mother convinced him to contribute to the establishment of a $3.3 million investment trust called the Sarah C. Getty Trust to ensure the family's ever-growing wealth could be channeled into a tax-free and also secure income for future generations of the Getty family. The family kept expanding their wealth and the business kept booming. Well, yet Paul never calmed down in spending. He was spending lots of his income on women and partying every time without yielding to her mom's advice. In 1948 through 1949, Getty paid Ibinia Saud $9.5 million in cash, guaranteed $1 million a year and a royalty of 55 cents a barrel for the Saudi Arabian Neutral Zone concession. Oil was finally discovered in March 1953. Since 1953, Getty's Gamble produced 16 million barrels a year, which contributed greatly to the fortune responsible for making him one of the richest people in the world. J. Paul merged his numerous oil interests into Getty Oil Company, and later, Tidewater Oil was dropped as a corporate brand. Tidewater was later sold many times during its existence. Getty's wealth and ability to speak Arabic enabled his unparalleled expansion into the Middle East. He owned the controlling interests in about 200 businesses, including Getty Oil, Getty Inc., and many others. Getty's first interest into collecting arts began in the late 1930s, when he took inspiration from the collection of 18th century French paintings and furniture owned by the landlord of his New York City penthouse, Amy Guest, a relation of Sir Winston Churchill. A fan of 18th century France, Getty began buying furniture from the period at reduced prices because of the depressed art market. His stinginess limited the range of his collecting because he refused to pay full price. Nonetheless, at the time of his death, he owned more than 600 items valued at more than $4 million, including paintings by Rubin, Titian, Gainsborough, Renoir, Tintoretto, Degas, and Monet. During the 1950s, Getty's interest shifted to Greco-Roman sculpture, which led to the building of the Getty Villa in the 1970s to house the collection. These items were transferred to the Getty Museum and the Getty Villa in Los Angeles. Getty was a notorious womanizer from the time of his youth, something that horrified his conservative Christian parents. His lawyer, Robin Lund, once said that Paul could hardly ever say no to a woman or yes to a man. Going back to Timeline in 1917, when he was 25, a paternity suit was filed against Getty in Los Angeles by Elsie Ekstrom, who claimed Jean Paul was the father of her daughter, Paula. Ekstrom claimed that Getty had taken her virginity and fathered the child, while his legal team tried to undermine her credibility by claiming that she had a history of promiscuity. Later, Getty agreed to a settlement of $10,000 upon which Ekstrom left town with the baby. Getty was married and divorced five times. He had five sons with four of his wives and several concubines. Oh, uh, I wouldn't say that I'm frightened of anything in particular. Just, um, I suppose, a necessary precaution. Against what? Well, there's no money in the house. <clears throat> a few uh, works of art. I don't think they'd be very saleable. Getty was a very stingy man. 
The two most widely known examples are his reluctance to pay his grandson's $17 million kidnapping ransom and a notorious payphone he had installed at Sutton Place. A darker incident was his fifth wife's claim that Getty had scolded her for spending too much on their terminally ill son's medical treatment, though he was worth tens of millions of dollars at the time. He was well known for bargaining on almost everything to obtain the lowest possible price, including suites at luxury hotels and virtually all purchases of artwork and real estate. Getty's secretary claimed that Getty did his laundry by hand because he didn't want to pay for his clothes to be laundered. When his shirts became frayed at the cuffs, he would trim the frayed part instead of purchasing new shirts. Reusing stationery was another obsession of Jean Paul. He had a habit of writing responses to letters on the margins or backsides and mailing them back, rather than using a new sheet of paper. He also carefully saved and reused manila envelopes, rubber bands, and other office supplies. Sometimes, when Getty took a group of friends to a dog show in London, he made them walk around the block for 10 minutes until the tickets became half-priced at 5 p.m. because he didn't want to pay the full five shillings per head. If anything were involved with women, he spent lavishly. On June 30, 1960, he threw a 21st birthday party for a relative of his friend, the 16th Duke of Norfolk, which served as a housewarming party for the newly purchased Sutton Place. Partygoers were irritated by Paul's stinginess, such as not providing cigarettes and relegating everyone to using creosote portable toilets outside. At about 10 p.m., the party descended into pandemonium as party crashers arrived from London, swelling the already overcrowded halls and causing an estimated $20,000 pounds in damage. Many things were also stolen. The kidnapping of John Paul Getty III, the grandson of the American billionaire oil tycoon J. Paul Getty, is a notorious crime that occurred in Italy in 1973. The kidnapping and its aftermath were characterized by a complex web of intrigue, greed, and high-stakes negotiations, making it a compelling subject for a thriller documentary. John Paul Getty III was just 16 years old when he was abducted from the streets of Rome on July 10, 1973, by a group of Italian criminals. The kidnappers demanded a ransom of $17 million from Getty's grandfather, J. Paul Getty, who was at the time one of the richest men in the world. Initially, J. Paul Getty refused to pay the ransom, believing that it would encourage further kidnappings of his family members. He famously declared, I have 14 grandchildren. If I pay one penny now, I'll have 14 kidnapped grandchildren. As a result, the kidnappers resorted to increasingly violent tactics, including sending one of Getty's ears to a newspaper to prove they meant business. Getty eventually agreed to pay a reduced ransom of $2.9 million but only on the condition that he could claim it as a tax deduction. The negotiation for Getty's release were further complicated by the involvement of various intermediaries, including a former CIA operative and a Sicilian mafia boss. The kidnappers also struggled to keep Getty hidden, as he was moved multiple times and even managed to escape at one point, only to be recaptured. After five months in captivity, Getty was finally released in December 1973 after his family paid the ransom. However, the experience had a lasting impact on him and he struggled with drug addiction and health problems for the rest of his life. He died in 2011 at the age of 54. Though Getty remained an inveterate hard worker, boasting at age 74 that he often worked 16 to 18 hours per day overseeing his operations across the world, the New York Times wrote of Getty's domestic arrangement. Getty ended his life with a collection of desperately hopeful women, all living together in his Tudor mansion in England, none of them aware he was rewriting his will, changing everything to smaller payout. $209 a month to one, $1,167 to another. Only Kitson, one of his concubine he refused to marry, received a significant bequest upon Getty's death. She received 5,000 shares of Getty Oil, valued at $826,500, which doubled in value during the 1980s, and a $1,167 monthly income for life. 
Other shares were other 11 women he recognized in his will. Paul died of heart failure at the age of 83 on June 6, 1976 in Sutton Place near Guildford, Surrey. He was buried in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles County, California at the Getty Villa. The gravesite is not open to the public. Thank mm-hmm. you.